Okay, I'm going to give you a short lecture on another interesting possibility of genetics, uh, sex linkage. We've talked so far about how in the human uh, genome there are 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes. Uh, we looked at a karyotype of them and saw how they're organized 1 through 23. The first 22 pairs are what we call autosomal chromosomes. They're your typical chromosomes. Pair 23 is a little different. Those are the sex chromosomes, uh, and they determine male or female gender. And they look differently, so we give them different names. We would call the female chromosome the X, and we would call the Y chromosome male. So since we are diploid, XX would therefore uh, equal female. Uh, let's go ahead and write that down here so everyone knows what we're talking about. If your 23 chromosomes are X and X, therefore you're a girl. And if they're X and Y, therefore you're a male. So just uh, pretty simple uh, genetics here. Uh, during the sexual exchange of chromosomes, uh, since uh, mom and dad only give one chromosome, uh, mom could be XX, so would only give an X chromosome. Dad would be XY, so he could give an X or a Y. So that's why you probably heard that uh, the man would determine the sex of the child. Now there's a little bit of a problem here. Um, since we both have X chromosomes, if a woman had two X chromosomes, she would actually be giving twice the amount of proteins from the genes on that chromosome than the male would be. So over here on this side, Let's see if I can just bring up a pen here. So this would be an X and an X. Now you can see right away that the X chromosome is quite bigger than the Y chromosome. Uh, the Y chromosome really doesn't have much on it. It has the gene for testosterone, but not too much else. I think there's only something like four genes on there. Most of the genes are found on the X chromosome. So if, uh, again, if a woman had two Xs, she would be having twice the amount of proteins that a man would have. Now what tends to happen then is that, and it's random how it happens, but in the female body, one of the X chromosomes would actually be inactivated, yeah? And we would call that the bar body. So the result is that even though a woman is X and Y, XX and a man is X and Y, they would have each one functioning X chromosome there. We call that dosage uh, dosage uh, compensation, uh, but the bottom line is that everyone has the same amount of proteins in them. Okay, uh, let's take a look at why this is so important actually. Uh, and the reason is, is that first of all, the 23 pair determine sex, but also there are some interesting genes located on that 23rd pair. So first of all, let's just do simple Mendelian genetics to prove to everybody that the chance of having a boy or a girl is 50-50. <clears throat> if you have uh, four brothers and you want to know what the chances are of the fifth child, well, it's still 50-50, it doesn't matter. And here's why. So if you go ahead and look at the female, her eggs have to be X and X for the 23 chromosome, and the man has to be X and Y. Let's put them together in simple Mendelian genetics. Mendel said that sperm and egg come together randomly to reform in fertilization a diploid organism. If the sperm was X, we would therefore get, let's get a different color up here so you can all see what I'm talking about. You would only get XX, so that'd be girls. If the sperm came together as a Y, you would get XY, those would be boys. And you can clearly see that this is a one-to-one -one ratio, 50-50 chances of getting a boy or a girl. Now, here's where it gets interesting, though. There isn't much on that X chromosome. However, there are some interesting genes that have been found on the X chromosome. And uh, most of those genes actually cause some, well, sometimes they're diseases, sometimes they're just interesting phenotypes. A list of them are hemophilia. What is hemophilia? Hemophilia is a recessive trait that uh, is the inability to clot blood when you uh, cut yourself, also when you get internal bleeding or a hemorrhage. 
Uh, unfortunately, in my case, uh, one of the uh, traits is baldness. And we'll talk in a moment about why baldness is actually passed down from your grandmother. Another one is muscular dystrophy, uh, which is a weakening of the muscle tissue. And another one which has come up is color blindness. Now, all of these traits here are typically found in men. And there's a reason why that is. Let's go ahead and look at it for a moment. Now, a woman has, let's go ahead and draw some chromosomes up here so you know what I mean. Actually, I think I'll use a pen. Let's try a pen here. So here's a woman. Let's go ahead and look at color blindness for a second. So a woman has X, X, and a man is going to be X and Y. That's pretty good chromosomes for me early in the morning. Good. Now, let's try, um, oh, let's try color blindness for our example here. And let's go ahead and use the letter B to indicate the gene for color blindness. Now, color blindness, fortunately, most of these traits here are recessive. So let's go ahead and indicate the bad gene, colorblind gene, as being little b. Okay, and let's go ahead and use, oh, how about red for that? Now, suppose a woman has little b, okay? She could also have another little b. In other words, she could be homozygous recessive, and that woman would be colorblind. But the chances are that the woman doesn't have that, chances are she might have big B and little b. Since little b is a recessive, that woman, the heterozygote, would still be normal as far as color blindness. So in other words, because she has two chromosomes that have the gene, it's more unlikely for her to end up being a homozygous recessive. What about the man, though? Well, if the man has a big B, okay. He's normal. But what if, let's get our eraser up here, what if he has little b, right? Then he would be colorblind. Well, you say, but what about that y chromosome? Can't the y chromosome help out the same way the other x did on the woman? No, it can't. And the reason is the y has really no genes on it. So if we indicate someone as this, phenotype, this genotype here, we typically do not put anything on the Y because the Y has no genes. And so the man only has one opportunity to get the good gene. So for a man here, it's a 50-50 shot whether he's colorblind. For a woman here, it would only be uh, one out of four possibilities. So more likely that these diseases end up being in, uh, let's go ahead and draw the symbol there, in the male. Let's go ahead and try a example of this. So we'll uh, try some Mendelian genetics. Um, let's stick with our color blindness, right? So suppose we have, let's go ahead and write a good example up here. Suppose we have a heterozygote, uh, heterozygote uh, normal woman. Oops, that's not how a normal woman would be spelled at all, wouldn't it? a normal woman, and we'll go ahead and cross her by a, uh, a bold man. Oh, I said colorblind, didn't I? Let's try colorblind. Colorblind man. Fantastic. Okay, first of all, let's go ahead and write in the genotypes for these two guys. All righty, so... Let's see, heterozygous woman. Well, that's got to be a woman, right? XX. And the man has to be XY. We can always start with that. That's easy, right? Now, let's go ahead and put in the genes. Now, the woman is heterozygote. So she's got a big B, and then there's the colorblind guy. And uh, big B wins out, so that'd be a normal woman. The man is colorblind, so he must have that. And we don't put anything on the Y. Let's go ahead and do simple Mendelian genetics. So Mendel said 50-50 girls. There's our girls, right? And now let's go ahead and put in our boys. Yeah? Okay. Now, what's the odds that you would have a colorblind child? Let's take a look here. This guy 
Big B, little b. That's a normal girl. This is, right, a colorblind girl. This is a normal boy. This is a colorblind boy. Okay. Let's go ahead and just take a look for a moment. People always say that these traits tend to come down from your grandmother, but which grandmother did they come down from? Let's go ahead and say we're looking at baldness. That's something I've been concerned about a lot lately. Baldness, right? And, oh, what should we talk? Let's say uh, baldness is uh, little h. How about that for our trait? Oops. Little h is the bad guy. So let's go ahead and try that. Let us suppose that, unfortunately, I am bald. Bad, right? So I'm going to go ahead and draw my bald self down here. That's me, right? Great. And let's go ahead and put in the bald gene. So I am this guy. Very, very good. Now let's go up the ladder here, right? I came from mom and dad, yeah? So let's go ahead and put mom and dad in here. There's, oh boy, dad's really intense. Let's get rid of him there. Uh, we got to tone dad down a little bit. So let's try, there we go. There's dad, and there's good old mom, right? Okay, now dad doesn't have anything over here. Mom, let's suppose mom was normal, okay? So let's give mom a normal thing over there, right? Good, great. Now, I had to have gotten my Y from Dad, right? So let's suppose, oh, poor old Dad, maybe he's bald anyway, right? But the interesting thing here is if you look at the genes, right, the Y, right, had to have come from Dad. It's the only place it could have gotten it. So that means that the bald gene, right, had to have come from Mom. Mom, why'd you do that to me? Let's go ahead and put that bowl gene over at mom. Uh-oh. So let's write in mom over there. Uh, we know mom's trouble. So in other words, if it's a sex-linked trait, it pretty much had to have come from mom. Let's take mom up another generation here, right? And mom's dad and mom, my grandparents, right? There's my maternal grandfather. There's my maternal grandfather. Now, mom, right, XX, we don't know who she got it from, right? But let's go ahead and just write it in here. So this is grandma, right? And that's grandpa over here. Let's take a look. Now, 1X came from here and 1X came from here. Suppose, for example, that uh, grandma, right, Suppose grandma was completely normal, and suppose dad was completely normal. Therefore, um, the only way it could have happened, right, was that this gene here had to have come from here, like so, and then this gene perhaps was like so. Okay? So, this gene pretty much had to come from from, did I lose my color here? There we go. This one again had to have been passed down from the maternal side. Okay, so those are the culprits involved here. Let's go on to our next screen, right? Oops, let me get back here. Great. Okay, so let's take a look at hemophilia, for example. Suppose that you have a normal male and a carrier female. Now, carrier is a fancy way of us saying she's a heterozygote. Okay, so there's, right there, the bad gene, yeah? Okay. All the boys had to have gotten Y from dad. Here's the boys here, right? If this is normal, it means mom gave him a normal. If it's a hemophiliac, then that had to have come from mom. So these things always pass down from mom. Now, the question comes up these points, well, how could you ever have gotten a girl with a bad sex link trait? The only way that could happen, right, is the girl had to get 
two, she had to be homozygous recessive, yeah? She had to get two bad traits, one from dad and one from mom. That means that mom had to be heterozygous, she had to be a carrier, and dad also had to have the trait. This could happen, but the chances of it happening are very small, so it, it really doesn't happen much. And in the case of really bad diseases like hemophilia, uh, most women do not prefer to marry a man who has a serious disease like hemophilia, so the chances of that happening and getting passed down are very, very small. So let's go ahead and try that one. Suppose you had, suppose you had a hemophiliac man. So let's go ahead. There's the man, right? And there's the woman, right? And let's suppose that the man was a hemophiliac. So there we go. Let's suppose that mom was a heterozygote, right? This is a very rare cross, right? What would be the chances of their children? Again, 50-50 girl, boy, yeah? And there's the boy. And what would be the phenotypes of our children or offspring, right? Let's go ahead and draw that in there. This girl over here would be normal. Here's a homozygous recessive. She's got hemophilia. Normal boy. And that's a hemophiliac boy. This is a very rare cross. This doesn't happen very often that both mom and dad would have the trait. The trait is very rare to begin with, right? So we wouldn't see it very often in both parents. But if that did happen, in that rare case, that's how you would actually end up with a girl who had the trait. But most of the time, it's going to occur in boys.